Welcome back. Has the BJP left the state exchequer in a bad shape? And also, what is the benefit of a double engine Sarkar, says the Congress? I'll get the BJP to respond to that. But before that, let's listen in to what the newly inducted ministers are saying about how the Congress plans to implement these five promises. We have with us Congress Minister and MLA Sadish Charki Oli, sir. Thank you for joining us. So, by when will we uh, expect to see all the five guarantees implemented, sir? Uh, likely first soon. Okay. So, another 10 days we will wait. Huh. Already to the... Given a in principal approval today. Hmm. So, given all the department direction hmm. to get the details. Hmm. Who will be beneficiary? Okay. Who will get the money? Huh. So, it will take another... Uh, week or 10 days. Okay. Sir, will there be any conditions regarding all these five um, uh, no guarantees being promised by the Congress? No, no, no any no condition. Conditions. It will be uh, all for free. Okay. Uh, and also regarding this, uh, BJP and other parties are stating that, uh, no, just like in Himachal Pradesh or Rajasthan, will, they, will there be implementation of these guarantees or will this go the same way in the other states as well? No, no, no. We will 100% will implement this all. We have hmm. promised hmm. public Karnataka. Hmm. We will be 100% promise. Joining me right now is Mr. Ramlinga Reddy. Sir, thank you so much for speaking to uh, CNN News 18. Also, congratulations to you and your party. Sir, about the five guarantees, your party said that in the first cabinet meeting itself that we will be implementing it. But now you are saying that in a day or three that we will uh, implement. All the five guarantees we decided to implement. The modalities officers are doing. For example, there are about uh, uh, 1 crore 20 or 30 lakh families. We have, we have to give 2,000 rupees for that uh, every family. We want account now. We want their account. That modalities are going on. We will implement all the five promises without any conditions, says uh, Mr. Jarkioli. We'll have to see if uh, Mr. Sidramaya agrees with that. Coming back to you, Mr. Rao. You look at the numbers that Chidramaya is giving. He says, when I exited office in 2018, the debt of the state was 2.42 lakh crore rupees. He says, now, in March, according to Mr. Bomai, the debt of the state was 5.64 lakh crore rupees. It is nearly doubled. And he says, what is the benefit of a double engine Sarkar? And the BJP has, in fact, ruined the state exchequer. Arish. Let me remind your viewers and everyone of your fellow panelists. We had a crisis management, you know, when the COVID was there, and what was one of the reasons why there was a uh, more of uh, the loan which was taken. That is point number one. Now, point number two. Well, I will count the figures now. Before that, I just want to remind the Congress party. What happened to their promise of giving sourcing it from the forty percent figure? Where is it now? They were telling one lakh twenty thousand crores. Mm. Haven't you haven't you heard of it? And let me tell you also this, the very same mm. people who are telling, you know, they, they will fund it. They know you have a 13th time uh, finance minister, Mr. Siddharamaya, and you want something called as an in-principle uh, in principle approval. What do you mean by in-principle approval? And then they come out with mm. conditions. This was not, this was not, perhaps, the, you know, you, you in the media or anyone else perhaps, must have accepted as to we may be surprised with the Congress party's stance, but at least from BJP, we are not surprised. We know what they are. I'm sure that it is going to be a, a showdown for the Karnataka government presently, which is headed by Mr. Siddharamaya. And Mr. Ahmad was asking me, please answer this. Are bhai, people have answered. People have answered for your, you know, you have lured the voters and we have filed a complaint also before the election commission that this is nothing but bribery. Now they are coming and telling conditions. Hmm. Don't you remember what happened in Chhattisgarh? I'll just remind the Congress party, Mr. the Congress spokesperson. They told 2,500 will be given for 10 lakh unemployed youth. And what did they do? Alas, they did not even give. They told put a lot of conditions have put and they allocated only 250 crores. No, this is what the Congress party is all about. Why do they want to lie? Why did they lie? And hmm. what was the Congress hmm. party doing during their regime? They also took loan. They, they, at that point of time, you did not have any COVID. What was the money used for at that point of time? Did they use it for asset creation? Did they use it for expenses? They have to answer this also at this point of time. Merely seeing as to what was there before, weren't they aware Miss, of it? Mr. B.S. Arun, Mr. B.S. Arun, if you look at uh, what has happened today, 
Does it surprise you? Do you think the Congress probably wasn't prepared for this? The cabinet says in principle approval. Uh, that usually doesn't happen. There's a file that goes to all the department, then comes to the cabinet. They're saying by next cabinet, we'll figure out how much money is required for other four schemes. Do you think this was perhaps announced in a hurry? They should have done a little more homework? See, I, I don't think so. Because one, of course, the, there might have been some discussions at the uh, you know, preparation stage, at the preparation of the manifesto. There are senior leaders like Parameshwara, there are others, and they might have consulted some uh, economic uh, financial mm. experts. Now, at the, the first meeting itself, you can't expect a government to go through all the details of uh, these uh, schemes, you know, to be uh, unveiled schemes. Mm. So I think they they need some time. I think we must give them some more time. And it's it's just uh, the first, it's like first day, first show, the very first cabinet meeting. And I think they need some time. Okay. And CM himself has said that in the next meeting... Okay, we'll first day, first show, details. we'll give them some time. I quickly want to come to a political question, sir. The cabinet formation, that's what we look forward for in the next week or so. You have various caste groups demanding uh, representation, whether as deputy chief minister or within the cabinet. Senior leaders miffed. How difficult or easy is it going to be for Sidramaya? Mr. B.S. Arun? It will be a difficult task. Because, Harish, you know it very well that, hmm. you know, we have so many leaders uh, from different uh, communities who have got elected. Very senior leaders. Some of them yes. have been accommodated today. But there are people like, you know, Arvi Deshpande, nine-time MLA. Uh, th there are others who have been hmm. elected eight times, yes. seven times, six times. You know, they should they not be accommodated? Then should the newcomers be uh, not be accommodated yes. in the, you know, fresh faces should be there? And, and then, uh, you know, uh, satisfying hmm. or balancing the different communities, one, and the balancing the different regions hmm. across the state is another. Today, no woman hmm. has been taken hmm. into the hmm. cabinet, which I feel uh, is a backward step. Yes. A, a woman who have, women who have been yes. uh, the backbone of Congress uh, in this uh, election should have been given at least one in this, uh, hmm. in this very first uh, phase of, ex uh, you know, hmm. swearing in. That has not been done. Yeah. So more women have to be taken, number one. Yeah. And then, you know, some youngsters. Today, there mm. are hardly any fa new faces, except if mm. you ca consider, uh, you know, Samir Ahmad Khan as one. Uh, so new faces have to come. Women have to come. Yeah. Various uh, caste and communities True. and religions have to True. be represented. And regions have to be given. Absolutely. Uh, That's something score. that I want to take to uh, uh, Mr. S.A. Ahmed. Mr. S.A. Ahmed, you had... Uh, Sidramaya or Mr. Rahul Gandhi constantly thanking the women voters of Karnataka. But in the top eight members who enter the cabinet first, you don't have a single female face. Uh, it's not like you don't have female MLAs. You do have a lot of uh, women MLAs as well. Why is it that the Congress party has ignored them? The second question here is uh, many, in fact, a senior Congress leader told me that one of the biggest challenge for uh, Mr. Sidramaya would be managing the egos of senior leaders. You have a BK Hari Prasad, you have a KH Munyapa and others, all of them having access to the Gandhi family in the high command. How does the government now deal with this or Mr. Sidramaya deal with this? See, Harish ji, uh, let me put it in two ways. Number one, I am here by questioning the moral authority of the, my BJP friend, my good friend, that uh, they have, they have ruined the entire financial credibility of this country, number one. The people who have amended the GST laws about more than 100 times, and uh, the people who are not sure about the monetary policy, even after ruling for the nine years, don't have any moral authority to question it. Okay, okay. I'm afraid we are out of time, but uh, one thing is clear that... All eyes will be on this government on how they'll implement these five promises. Will they come with any sort of a rider or will everyone get a benefit? Thank you for joining us on this show. That's all we have for today. We'll be back next week with more stories and insights from across South India.